A wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. This is a concluding remark from computer scientist Ebert A. Simon in an address on computers, communications, and the public interest from 1971. Now, 50 years later, it's hard to comprehend how someone could so clearly foresee the dilemma that we would find ourselves in. Every day, it seems we're fighting an unwinnable battle against tech giants. The Pandora's box that we hold in the palms of our hands contains technologies that are explicitly designed to overload us with information, co-opt our attention, and reduce our autonomy. So the question is, how do we find balance in our use of social media when the scale is so heavily weighted against us? In my previous video, I outlined the necessary steps for performing a 30-day digital declutter that cleanses us from the influence of these technologies to be able to clearly evaluate how they actually affect our lives. And with this newfound clarity, it's time to pass these technologies through the digital minimalism filter. Does it serve something you deeply value? Is it the best way to use technology to serve this value? Is its role in your life constrained? Now, the first two filters are most important for decluttering your life from the frivolous and superficial technologies. But properly answering the last one is what leads to a more sustainable and healthy relationship with digital technologies as tools that we use to improve our lives. In this video, I'm going to focus on filter number three. Once we've identified the useful technologies that we value, how do we keep them in line so that they don't take over and consume our time? This is my suggested three-step procedure. Delete social media from your phone. I mean it, all of it. This isn't a joke. Delete it from your phone right now. No more endless thumb scrolling, no more picking up your phone to search for something on Google only to find yourself sidetracked to Instagram five minutes later. The idea isn't necessarily to completely stop using social media, but instead to migrate all of its potential uses to your browser and dumb down your phone. Yeah, by doing this, its use will most certainly immediately drop. But more importantly, the use of social media is much more controllable on your browser than in your pocket, putting you back in the driver's seat. Block all social media websites on your browser. The goal here is to turn your devices into single purpose computers. Your laptop and your desktop are the most powerful and versatile tools at your disposal. It's important that you make sure that they're working for your own benefit. By blocking most unnecessary services by default, your ability to concentrate on singular tasks and not get sidetracked will increase significantly and therefore give you more agency over what you choose to do with your time. So I'm going to suggest a few Chrome extensions that I use that have drastically changed my relationship with my computer as a single purpose tool. Newsfeed Eradicator. This is a genius extension that removes the endless newsfeed from our favorite scrolling websites. Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, boom. Newsfeed eradicated and attention restored. Distraction for YouTube. Now, YouTube is particularly cunning, and even without a newsfeed, it finds tricky ways to suck us into multi hour voids of comments scrolling or suggested video holes. Distraction for YouTube removes all the window dressing from YouTube and leaves us with the video content and only the video content so that you can use YouTube to find the information you're actually looking for. Finally, if you really need to lay down an iron fist and regulate more strongly, add something like cold turkey or block site, which will block certain websites completely. I personally find these rather 
limiting since I rarely want to be completely blocked out of YouTube if I really need information from it. It ends up being more frustrating than useful. Remember, the important takeaway here isn't necessarily to never use these sites again, but rather to ensure that when we do use them, we do it with intention and not because we're just distracted. Create a schedule for the intentional use of social media. So now that you've wiped your phone and disarmed your browser, it's time to set parameters around when you allow yourself access to these sites for enjoyment. Look, we all need to live a little, and if Instagram or YouTube gives us that extra laugh that we need in our day, that's great. But you should be choosing when those moments are and not have them chosen for you. That way you can maximize the good information and cut out the waste. I personally don't allow myself to check any socials before 5 p.m. so that I have the day purely to myself. I turn off the newsfeed eradicator for 30 minutes if I'm feeling like indulging, and on weekends I might even let loose and go for a couple hours in the evening. The important thing is not so much the quantity of time, but deciding the time in advance. It's important that the noise of social media doesn't permeate your entire day. It needs to be controlled, monitored, and tamed more than anything we do. Because, and I'm not exaggerating here, it's actively seeking to control your mind. And that's it. That's really all there is to it just three things to dramatically alter the way you engage with social media and reclaim control over your attention. When I started implementing this, I began having so much more clarity of mind and time to focus on the things that actually make me happy and fulfill me. It's crazy how draining all the noise is and how you don't really realize how distracting it is until it's gone. There's already only so much time given to us. Why let someone else choose how we spend it?